I built this prototype magnetic pendulum uh, in order to just gain an understanding of the interesting uh, circuit and the way that uh, the pendulum operates. So that's uh, the point of this uh, video. There are plenty of designs on the internet for a design of magnetic pendulums, uh, but uh, very little information, if any information at all, on how the circuit actually uh, operates. Uh, this uh, particular pendulum has a um, an armature which is about uh, 12 inches long and uh, glued to the end of the armature is is a magnet and um, below the magnet as you can see is a coil which consists of 800 turns of number 28 gauge wire and then we have a small circuit which is driven by two one and a half volt uh, batteries. This is a view of the horseshoe magnet attached to the bottom of the armature. This magnet was recovered from a hard drive. Here is a view of the schematic which uh, was drawn in uh, LT Spice uh, so that uh, the LT Spice simulator could be used. Just a brief description of some of the uh, of the uh, components. The battery source consists of three volts, two one and a half volt batteries, and it will actually operate down to uh, uh, two volts. And then we have uh, uh, two transistors. In the bottom right hand corner, we've got um, the uh, magnetic coil L1, which has an, an inductance of 6.3 millihenries and a 10 ohm series resistance to represent the equivalent series resistance of the coil. V3 is a simulation of the uh, magnetic armature passing over the coil. And uh, in this particular simulation, that is set to have an amplitude of 300 millivolts and a period of, of 10 milliseconds, which uh, is in the same ballpark as the actual prototype. We then have a reverse biased uh, diode, a flyback diode uh, LED D2. Q1 is slightly forward biased uh, through a voltage divider uh, to a level of approximately uh, 200 uh, millivolts. This graph here shows the output uh, from the LT Spice uh, simulation. Uh, this is a single pass of the armature over a period of approximately 11 milliseconds across the, the coil. So as you can see here, we have a series of oscillations which occurs as the armature passes over the coil. This is the interesting part of the uh, circuit operation. Taking a look back at the schematic, I'll try and go through and give you a description of how the circuit actually operates. When the power is, is applied to the circuit, initially Q1 and Q2 are off. As the armature swings across the coil, a positive going voltage is generated by a coil L1, which causes the transistor Q1 to turn on as this voltage rises towards the three volt rail. As Q1 turns on, this pulls down the base of Q2 and therefore Q2 begins to turn on. Q2 in fact turns on rapidly as Q1 uh, turns on and the base is pulled towards ground. Initially, Q2 is able to supply the current to the inductor as a result of inductive, the inductive reaction of L1. So the impedance seen on Q2 is high. However, as the magnetic field builds within L1, the impedance of Q2 converges towards the uh, 10 ohms uh, series resistance of L1. As this happens, uh, there's more, more demand for current to be supplied 
uh, to the base or through the base of Q2. Q2 is unable to remain on since there's a limit to the supplied base current. So therefore Q2 starts to turn off. And as Q turns, Q2 turns off, of course, Q1 also turns off. A point is reached where L1, the magnetic field in L1 collapses. And as that magnetic field collapses, of course, it generates a back EMF, which lights the LED diode. This LT Spice view or printout shows a more detailed view of each of the oscillations or pulses which occur uh, during the, the passing of the armature over the coil. So you can see here very clearly this is the, um, the voltage on the collector of, of transistor Q2. It rises very rapidly to the rail voltage uh, just under, or well, in fact, three volts. And then uh, as the current builds in Q2 and, uh, and in association with the building magnetic field in the coil, the voltage starts to drop because Q2 cannot actually supply the required, uh, the required current. A point is actually reached where Q2 uh, now starts to turn off. Q2 turns off rapidly and heads towards the ground potential. So the supplied energy to the coil is represented by this positive going pulse uh, on, on the diagram. At this point, the magnetic field uh, collapses in L1 and generates a back EMF, which supplies this amount of energy to the LED and lights the LED subsequently. At this point, the cycle begins uh, all over again. And the period of, of oscillation here is approximately a half a millisecond. We're now going to examine what the waveform looks like as the magnetic armature passes over the coil. Uh, for this demonstration, we have the power off in the circuit and a storage scope, scope connected to the collector of Q2. If we watch the storage scope and swing the pendulum one time from right to left, we see a waveform consisting of two negative peaks and a single positive peak. If we now swing the pendulum from left to right, we see an opposite waveform generated consisting of two positive peaks and one negative peak. This is a good demonstration of Lenz's law and uh, demonstrates the complex interaction between the horseshoe magnet um, as it passes over the coil and the magnetic field and resultant uh, electromagnetic force uh, generated by the um, uh, by the, uh, the coil. Here in the slow motion we can see the LED flashing once when the armature moves from right to left and the LED flashing twice when the armature moves from left to right. A good uh, demonstration. We now have power supplied to the circuit and we can see very clearly on the storage scope the generation of energy pulses um, on the positive going peaks. In one case we've got a single positive going peak as the armature moves from right to left and then on the other case we have two positive uh, energy peaks as we move from left the armature moves from left to right. This is a view of the output waveform, the voltage waveform on Q2 collector as a result of the swinging uh, armature. And uh, we can observe that it's the same as that predicted by the LT Spice simulation.
This is a view of the waveform as the armature passes over the coil. You can see that it has a period of uh, 14 milliseconds and consists of multiple oscillations. Further analysis of this circuit reveals the fact that an important aspect of the operation of this circuit is the limitation of the base current flowing through R4, Q1, and of course the emitter base uh, junction of Q2. If the resistor R4 is too low or the gain of Q2 is too high, then what happens is the amount of base current is not limited and therefore even when R3 10 ohms is seen in Q2, in other words, the magnetic field is completely built in the coil, sufficient current can actually be supplied through Q2 in the fully on position. So what this means is that once a single pulse, once the uh, armature passes the first time over the coil, Q1 is turned on, Q2 is turned on, and they remain on. They don't uh, turn off at the end or when the armature passes or is completed passing over the coil. So it's important to get the dimension or the, uh, the, the, the size of resistor R4 correct when developing a circuit like this.